As most of you know, a few weeks ago we discussed Anita Sarkeesian's visit at Bioware, in which an inside source notified me her visit to the studio was viewed as being problematic, with the main issue being that the game Bioware is working on, Anthem, has already faced tons of negative attention, and bringing in someone like Anita Sarkeesian would only bring more negative attention. Anyway, some of you guys were messaging me about a simple tweet she wrote in response to another one, and her tweet said, Plus one all of this re, Trump using video games as a scapegoat. So if this was anyone else, John or Jane Doe, it would be like, who cares? But this is a pretty hypocritical and ironic tweet. First, the tweet she was responding to said, and I say this as someone who wants us as a culture to be way more thoughtful about how media depictions glorify violence and more willing to have those conversations. This kind of framing is spectacularly misguided and counterproductive. And what this is all about is Donald Trump's meeting with the video game industry that originally no one from the video game industry knew about when it was announced. But the thing is, just like the 1990s and the early 2000s, the violence violent video game narrative is for some reason being brought up and blamed for the Florida shooting. To be fair though, back when the Sandy Hook tragedy happened, Joe Biden met with the video game industry about the no good violent video games. Violent video games, the latest target of the president's task force on guns set up in the wake of the Sandy Hook Elementary School massacre. Leaders of the industry met with Vice President Biden yesterday and gun supporters say that's where the real blame lies when it comes to mass shootings. Anyway, over the last few years, more research has come about, and video games have been found to not cause violent behavior, I know, surprise. I did a full video on this a few weeks ago, but in this current day, more and more studies have found video games actually cause less violence. In 2017, the Media Psychology and Technology Division of the American Psychological Association released a statement suggesting reporters and policymakers cease linking mass shootings to violent media, given the lack of evidence for a link. It's also been found that some of the big studies done in the early 2000s ignored inconsistencies and were pretty much biased. But this leads us to a few weeks ago when Donald Trump said this. We have to look at the internet because a lot of bad things are happening to young kids and young minds and their minds are being formed. And uh, we have to do something about uh, maybe what they're seeing and how they're seeing it. And also video games. I'm hearing more and more people say the level of violence on video games is really shaping young people's thoughts. And then you go the further step, and that's the movies. You see these movies, they're so violent. Now you may ask why Anita's tweet is bizarre, hypocritical, or ironic. And it's because, if anything, she said the complete opposite in the past. This is one of those moments when people, in this case Anita, are just trying to jump on the bandwagon of disagreeing with everything Trump says, even though in the past she said pretty much similar things. Also, this tweet, again, is pretty f hypocritical. If anything, Anita has used video games as a scapegoat for years. A couple of good examples, well I probably could give a few hundred, but back at E3 2015 she live tweeted Bethesda's conference on her own company's Feminist Frequency account, and well here are some of the highlights. Only a few minutes into the Bethesda press conference and its wall-to-wall -wall glorification of grotesque violence I can barely watch. It's really troubling and depressing that the hashtag BE3 audiences enthusiastically cheering for bodies being ripped apart. This level of extreme violence should not be considered normal. It's not an excuse to say it's expected because doom, that's the problem. The hashtag Fallout 4 crafting system is cool. Imagine how much cooler it could be if it wasn't so focused on building stuff to kill other stuff. Now besides that Bethesda conference, there has been some other comments that she's written on the same Feminist Frequency account over the years. Here's a couple more examples. Not a coincidence, it's always men and boys committing mass shootings. The pattern is connected to ideas of toxic masculinity in our culture. And another one, mass shootings are one tragic consequence of a culture that perpetuates toxic ideas of masculinity. This is how patriarchy can harm men too. And the following one, our culture is deeply sick when simply asking questions about how toxic forms of masculinity may harm men leads to hours of hate on Twitter. And then, if you want to hear some more examples of her scapegoating, the only problem with playing video games for research is having to play terribly horrible, awful, and sexist games. Cough, wet, cough. And another one, Dear Video Games, can we please just stop with all the brooding, unemotional, aggressively sexist male anti-hero protagonist? Thanks. And then the last one I'll bring up, I play tons of awful sexist video games, but God of War 3 really is one of the most brazenly misogynist titles ever produced. 
And again, we could sit here for a very long time going over many more things that pretty much align with her stance on video games over the years. But as Twitter account MomBot said it perfectly, you pretty much have Anita blaming video games for toxic masculinity and then blaming toxic masculinity for mass shooting, so taking it a step further. But yeah. Anyway, I'll finish this video by saying I don't care what side you lean, hopefully you understand video games don't cause violence. And each side has for years blamed video games. Hell, it even seems Jack Thompson, the most famous anti-video game activist, wants to become relevant again and try to blame video games once more following his numerous failed attempts years ago. Also recently, CNN published an editorial titled, If a possible mass shooter wants to hone his craft, don't hand him a virtual boot camp with a image of an Xbox 360 controller in Modern Warfare 2 as the thumbnail, just to show you how much this author, Jeremy Balinson, does not follow games from this decade. But anyway, thank you for watching. What do you make of Anita's hypocritical tweet and the new movement against video games? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Also make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this video or found any informative value, and consider subscribing for more videos like this, and I'll see you later.